Welcome back to the Algarve and to part two of the mods and tweaks to my 2021 Triumph Trident 660. This time I'll be looking at the Triumph Quick Shifter, Bluetooth connectivity module and USB charger, as well as the adjustable brake and clutch levers from Tech Parts, the SW Motec tank bag and a couple of minor aesthetic changes I've made. I'll put all the relevant links in the description if you're interested in the hardware. So here I am on my way back to the one and only Triumph dealer here in southern Portugal to have perhaps the two most interesting accessories fitted, the Bluetooth connectivity module and the quick shifter. Shall we talk about the quick shifter first? Well, there's not a lot to say really other than that it is the best quick shifter I've used to date. You can definitely tell the technology is improving all the time. I had the up only shifter on my 2017 Street Triple, uh, which was okay, but a little bit brutal. The up and down shifter I had on my BMW F900XR uh, last year was better, but I still had to concentrate on getting the right engine load to avoid too much jerkiness. Well. The iteration on the Trident is really very good, a significant improvement. The up and down shifts are practically imperceptible, so much so that on occasion, particularly on the up shifts, I find myself having to look at the gear in indicator on the clock to see if the box really has changed gear. It's never going to have the perfect smoothness of a real automatic gearbox with torque converter, but it's on a par with, say, uh, Volkswagen's DSG box. That's to say, 90% imperceptible, and only 10% of the time can you feel a very slight shunt. One thing that was immediately clear as soon as I rode away from the dealer was that the changes using the clutch lever, which I still continue to do most of the time, are also a lot smoother than they were. As if the gearbox is thanking you for using the clutch lever, even if it can do the change with the quick shifter if you really want it to. So, I think overall the quick shifter is probably the best option you can tick on the Trident and definitely worth the money. So on to the Bluetooth connectivity module. Well, pairing the device to my phone was fairly straightforward, although I found the instructions in the My Triumph app slightly confusing. Like most things nowadays you have to try a couple of times, but I did get there in the end. The navigation is clear and legible, easier to see than the tiny beeline device I use on my scooter, for example. And the instructions are clear, if sometimes a little late, which has meant I've missed a turning on a couple of occasions and had to turn round. It's never going to fully rival a map display you get from a TomTom -tom or Apple CarPlay device, but it does the job and certainly beats having to stop and consult your phone or a physical map and avoids any risk of your phone's delicate image stabilization hardware being shaken to bits by the handlebar vibrations. I must confess that I haven't connected any sort of uh, earpiece yet so I can't comment on the quality of the audible instructions or the music and text message notifications but I try to avoid being too connected to the world when I'm out on my bike anyway and so I doubt I'll be using these features very much anyway. Similarly I can't comment on the GoPro controls as I use a different brand of action camera which is not compatible with the Triumph system unfortunately. Again a detail I'm not too concerned about as I really only got the connectivity module for the sat-nav sat and the ease of resale. The USB charger does what it says on the packet really, not the most exciting mod, but here's a photo so you can see where it goes, or at least where the mechanic fitted mine. It's a classic USB-A, unfortunately, rather than the more efficient C, but I'll probably only use it in an emergency anyway. I imagine it would be simple enough to run a fly lead to a more convenient place like the handlebars if you wanted to use it on a regular basis to charge your phone, sat-nav or action camera. Now for the tech bike parts, brake and clutch levers and the adjustable foot pegs. Levers first, this is a no-brainer to be honest, just do it. Uh, they look a lot nicer, they're more comfortable in the hand 
and the range of adjustment is much improved over the original. Plus, they're very cheap at about £32 or €37 Euros for the pair and fitting takes less than 10 minutes. The adjustment settings go from 6, the furthest away, to 1 and as I like my levers close in general, I was expecting to immediately set them both to 1 but such is the range compared to the factory levers that I've got the clutch on four and the brake on three, so still plenty of adjustment available if I fancy some at a later date. The only negative is this logo, which is placed in a very prominent position. I get why manufacturers do this, but it always puts me off buying aftermarket accessories. I thought about painting over it, but it would be difficult to match the satin finish, and given how levers are used, I imagine the paint would wear off quite quickly. So any suggestions on how to cover this logo up would be most welcome in the comments section. This slight negative aside though, I would recommend the levers without hesitation. And I would even go as far as to say that Tech should be supplying Triumph Direct. Why not send a box to Hinkley, uh, I mean Thailand, and see what they say. So the foot pegs, well, I put them on, tried them and they work fine. A lot more space for my legs, a lot more comfortable, but I've decided to put the stock pegs back on for the moment for three reasons. First two reasons are my fault really, so I'm blaming myself here, not tech parts. I ordered the, lever, the pegs a few days after I got the bike a month ago in a sort of panic because having come from two tall sports adventure type bikes. Um, I initially found the Trident's riding position a bit cramped, but I've kind of got used to it now and it doesn't bother me so much, so I wasn't that desperate to get these pegs fitted. Second reason, this is the first time I've ever felt the need to fit adjustable pegs on any of my bikes and I completely overlook the fact that as you change the height of the pegs, you inevitably change the angle of your foot in relation to the gear selector and brake pedal. And I was fine with those the way they were. Now, reason number three uh, is the way they look on the bike. I think the problem is that they feel expensive in the hand, which they are, £50 plus another £20 if you want the 40mm extenders, which I took, probably unnecessarily. Um, but I just think they look a little bit cheap. On their website, it looked as though they had a satin finish, almost matte, like the original pegs. But in reality, they're quite a bit shinier and don't look as nice as the factory pegs, in my opinion. Although you could argue with some justification that the finish does match the heel plate a little bit better. I should say at this point that they are also available in black and with hindsight I should probably have gone with that. I don't know, I might put them on at a later date because they do work and leg space is definitely improved. What do you think? Am I being too picky here? I mean they're only pegs to rest your feet on after all, does it really matter what they look like? Should I return them and maybe ask for some black ones? Certainly the levers are a no-brainer, no in my opinion. As I said, tech should be supplying Triumph Direct, they're so good. But I'm not 100% sure about the pegs. We'll see. So on to luggage solutions. Well, there's so little space under the Trident seat that I've ended up making my own emergency kit comprising a miniature multi-tool, a couple of ties and two small charging cables, one for my camera and one for my iPhone. And as reassuring as it is to have these items with me all the time, it is a bit limiting for a day trip. Problem is that luggage rarely looks good on any bike really, other than perhaps adventure bikes. And one of the Trident's selling point, uh, point, in my opinion, is the way it looks. Strapping side panniers or heaven forbid a top box really wasn't an option for me. So I decided to go with a tank bag as one of the least offensive means of carrying my knickknacks. A tail pack was also an option of course, but as I get older and less bendy I do appreciate the Trident's relatively low rear seat height 
when swinging my leg over, so I thought sticking a bag on the tank was the better option. If you don't know SW Motec, they're a German company that makes some really high quality accessories for a range of bikes. I've used their rear panniers and crash bars in the past on other bikes and have been very happy with both the fit and the overall quality, which is easily on a par with original equipment. I went with one of their Pro Tank bags, Pro being I believe slightly more rigid than their standard range of bags. There are half a dozen sizes to choose from. I went with the mid-size Engage model, which offers between 7 and 10 litres of carrying capacity, depending on whether you use it in its expanded unzipped form or not. I don't, but it's nice to know I have that extra bit of space if I need it. I also chose the Engage because of it sort of droops down, as it were, towards the rider and follows the contours of the Trident's tank nicely. It doesn't get in the way of the clocks or the key, although I did have to set it to its furthest back position to ensure everything stayed clean and to avoid the bag rubbing on the paintwork. You'll also need to order the bike-specific tank ring. The Trident is the same as the one I had on my Street Triple, which was convenient. Um, this takes five, ten minutes to fit, but once it's on, it's reasonably discreet and I think can be just left on the bike more or less permanently. The bag clips on and off very quickly and very securely using a combination of strong magnets and mechanical locking pins, and it's really very easy to use, snapping in a satisfying way into place thanks to the powerful magnets. It's not huge inside, but there's plenty of space for a puncture repair kit, a bottle of water, sandwich, pair of gloves, etc. Enough kit to ride out into the mountains for the afternoon and if I fancy a more challenging trip I often put the bike in the back of my mobile office as I will be showing you in a future video. Other aesthetic changes to the bike, well I've already shown you the front mud guard in a previous video, this can be disassembled into its three component parts quite easily and applying some suitable vinyl to each side to delete the red flash or L plate as one subscriber called it was a simple 10 minute job. I have a pair of silver radiator cowls on order two to further tone down the bike. These have a matte finish though I believe so I may need to apply some clear coat to match the tank. I'll obviously be carefully storing all the original parts because experience has taught me that when it comes time to sell the bike on, buyers nearly always prefer unmodified vehicles and on bikes in particular, they usually want to see the original parts to make sure any aftermarket add-ons or accessories aren't simply a cheaper way of covering up an accident than buying OE parts from an official source. Well, that's about it for part two of the modern tweaks. I do have a couple of other modifications to do, but they're probably not worthy of another video. Um, the silver coloured radiator cows I mentioned and these rather tasty bar end mirrors from Triumph, originally designed, I believe, for the Thruxton and the Rocket. They're expensive, but uh, very nice looking and they should give a slightly less shoulder filled view of what's behind me as well as making the bike easier to load into my low roof van, mobile office, because they'll reduce the overall height of the Trident by a few centimetres. I may also swap out the rear shock for something a bit more compliant one day, but I'm in no rush to do this. And the same goes for an underseat uh, tail tidy in place of the swing arm mounted affair. But I'm still in two minds about this and I'm actually leaning more and more to leaving things the way we are. We shall see. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. As always, thank you for watching.